Hello and welcome to Shifting Lanes. My name's Chad and today I'm coming to you with two very important questions. The first one is, top of your head, what is the most American vehicle or car that you can think of? Many might say it's the muscle car and they tick a lot of the boxes. They're loud, they're brash, they're aggressively styled. However, the winner by what people are actually buying, and this is by a landslide, is the pickup truck. So this is what you might think of when you think of a pickup truck. It's rugged, it's simple, it's meant to do a job. You might think that this is owned by a contractor or someone similar. However, it is owned by her. This is Courtney. Courtney is an events coordinator at a golf club. She spends the majority of her day behind a desk, answering emails, making phone calls, and booking parties for the club. She ventures out of her office to show prospective clients the bank of facilities, to run parties, and when the need arises, tend bar. It is people like Courtney who are buying pickup trucks in such large quantities that they make them the best selling cars in America. The question, and the question we are here to answer today, is why? So to answer this question, I went out and got myself a 2019 Ram 1500 Limited. Now the formula for a pickup truck is very simple. It's rugged, simplistic, it's got a body on frame construction. It's meant to be a workhorse. It's meant to go anywhere. That's why you may have noticed ours is a little bit dirty. That's because I've been using it as pickup trucks should be. However, this is no ordinary pickup truck. This has just about every single bell and whistle you could possibly want. Or to put it a simpler way, this ain't your granddaddy's pickup truck. So to kind of explain what I'm on about, I have a list of all the features that are on our Ram here. First and foremost, we have our Uconnect system. Now this isn't just any normal Uconnect system, it's the largest in class 12 inch touchscreen, and it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. We have the power running boards, we have blind spot monitoring with rear cross path and trailer detection, class exclusive active level four corner air suspension, a wireless charging pan. Now those are all of our standard features, but it doesn't stop there. We have the 5.7 V8 Hemi connected to an eight-speed automatic transmission. We have radar parking sensors. We have the bumper up front painted in body color. And we have the advanced safety package, which includes adaptive cruise control, braking assist, lane departure assist, parallel and perpendicular park assist. We have the surround view camera. And another option is the granite crystal metallic paint. We also have a panoramic sunroof and a 19-speaker Harman Kardon stereo system. Like I said, this is no ordinary truck. And why? Why put all of these features into a vehicle that is really meant to do work? Well, that's what we're here to find out. So we start with the exterior. First and foremost, I think the 1500 Ram is actually an extremely handsome vehicle. You get the sense that it's form following function. There's no real styling for styling's sake here. It's just, here's your truck. Here's what it's supposed to look like. Go do work with it. Our Ram comes with 20 inch wheels. Now you can get 22 inch wheels on yours if you're so inclined. Uh, I think that would help fill out the wheel arches a little bit, but to each their own. Again, this is meant to go off road, so maybe running on 22s might not be the greatest idea in the world. Our Ram is featured with Ram's exclusive Ram Box. Now this technology has been around for a while, but I think this is really clever. This space typically was unused. It, uh, now you can fit stuff like maybe a small toolkit, some small luggage, things like that. You also have your AC adapter here, so you can plug many, many different work items in there. One thing I would like to point out here, which gave me a little bit of a chuckle, is the emergency door latch system. Now these are in the trunks of many cars now. I actually think they're required by law, however, I'm not really confident the sized adult you're gonna be able to fit in here or sized human being that's gonna have the wherewithal to be like, oh no, I'm trapped, let me pull the emergency release. Now again, this might be just down to law given the location on the truck. However, it's there. As we move around, we can see our body matched bumper and dual exhaust. This is a like I said, this is a really good looking truck. So I think it's actually the best looking full size truck you can actually get on the market today. Fords and Chevys kind of look a little, I don't know, they look like they're trying too hard to be tough. 
the Ram is just there. It's simple, elegant, but yet it still stands out and screams Ram. Now we're gonna take a look inside where this truck really separates itself from everyone else. All right, so the interior, and we start in the back here with our uh, indigo and frost two-tone leather accoutrements. Uh, to me, it's tan and black, but uh, clearly Chrysler pays people a lot of money to come up with this stuff, so. At any rate, I don't really like this particular color combination. However, the uh, that's what the options list is for. However, the first thing you notice back here is just how much room you actually have. I mean, I'm not a small man, I'm not a large man, but I'm not a small man, and I got more room than I will ever need back here. This is fantastic for, again, this is kind of the boss's truck, so uh, all the employees have plenty of room, so you might wanna work for a guy if he uh, owns this truck. Also back here, you have heated and air-conditioned seats. Again, more charging ports for your uh, iPhones and smartphones in general. Another AC adapter, they're all over this truck. But as far as rear legroom, this is, this is better than a lot of SUVs, let alone pickup trucks. Most pickup trucks, you're kind of a little cramped in the back, even though they're four doors. However, this is really, really nice. I mean, you have stuff that'll fold down <clears throat> so you can put your drinks and I'm guessing a tablet back here. But this is, this is nice and it only gets better when you go up front. So the dominating feature inside the front of this cabin is obviously our class leading 12 inch Uconnect display. This is an optional extra, but as you can see, especially when you're say navigating or going on a trip, the map is absolutely huge. It is fantastic. It's really easy to see and it's really, really clear. So everything's really easy to see. You have a ton of buttons. Your climate control is here. Uh, when I first got in, I thought it was a little overly complicated. However, simply hitting the home button will let you, again, see everything you need from climate control. Uh, for filming, we have it off. Again, we'll go back to the nav here. We have all the charging we'll ever need. It's 2019, and yet we still have a CD player. We actually tested this out with, a, uh, with an artist I can't say on camera because they are vigilant about getting their copyright dues. A couple things I'm not a big fan of in here. Uh, the first thing is the twist button or the dial shift mechanism. Uh, I constantly am reaching here or reaching here looking for a, uh, a shifter and it's a dial. I've off, I have confused this for the volume knob a couple times. Uh, luckily I was turning it up so I didn't pop it into neutral by accident. The four wheel drive controls, they are push button which is super convenient. The problem with them is it's obviously daylight out now. However, these are not backlit. So at night, it's, uh, it's a little tricky to see. You're probably gonna end up getting used to that if you own the truck. However, it's not exactly great at night. The other thing about this interior that I'm not a huge fan of is our wireless charging port here. Now, it is called, and I'm not making this up, the Ram Charger. Now, to those of you who know your Mopar history, Ram Charger will sound familiar. Now, what is Ram Charger, or more specifically, who are the Ram Chargers? Well, they're a group of Chrysler engineers back in the late 40s, early 50s, who, uh, among other things, decided they wanted to go drag racing. So they built a ton of really cool, fast cars, fast Chryslers, and went drag racing with them. They had a huge amount of success, and now their name adorns a wireless charging port. So, obviously it's vertical, which is nice, so you can still kind of see your phone. The problem with it is, is that if you own a phone like I do, with buttons on the bottom, more than one, uh, this port constantly wants to try to press them. And it'll, it's obviously not gonna happen now because we're not driving, but as it bumps around, the phone opens, all that other stuff. It's a little bit annoying. Now, if you have an iPhone, it'll slot right in here, no problem. But for those of you Android users or phones with buttons on the bottom, the only way around this is to put your phone upside down. Now, is that a major inconvenience? No. Is it a reason not to buy this truck? No. However, for what this truck costs, which I'll touch on later in the video, I kind of want everything to be pretty perfect. The other thing is that we'll notice is our gauge cluster here. Now the center console is fantastic. Really high resolution, really, really nice. However, the dials 
that you see here and here the font on them is i guess the best way to describe it is a little overly fancy uh they're a little difficult to see at quick glance which is what you do when you're driving because you're obviously looking that way uh again it's not a major thing it's not a reason to not buy this truck but um it's just something that for the price of the vehicle it's it's a little overdone it's a little like where the exterior there's not styling for styling's sake this feels like styling for styling's sake so i'm not an absolute huge fan of that other creature comforts you have in here you have a telescoping and adjustable steering wheel adjustable pedals overall this interior is a phenomenal place to be it's just really comfortable the seats are comfortable yet supportive this kind of goes against what you would think in normal pickup trucks again you think utilitarian vehicle things are going to be pretty spartan in here obviously this interior is not spartan we even have a 18 speaker harman kardon stereo system which is absolutely phenomenal i absolutely love it the stereo really kicks it really thumps the quality is super clear and yes i have tested the audio quality with a professional musician and he has given it his two thumbs up approval so the only thing left to do now is to start her up and go for a drive so the first thing you really notice about the the ram 1500 is just just its presence its sheer size i mean it's a full-size pickup truck weighing in at nearly 6900 pounds it is a big vehicle and okay so in town that might be a minor hindrance but out on the open road out in the back roads thanks to a lot of the technology in here i can see just about every different angle i've got lane assist i've got braking assist so even though this thing feels absolutely massive to drive it's it's not much more difficult than a full-size sedan or anything like that you're basically the king of the road and i can't help it you get kind of caught up in that you feel like guess what small cars get out of my way or you're gonna lose and I'm not saying that you know you bully people off the road or you be a complete jackass with it but you just it makes you feel like basically you're the king of all you survey it's a really cool feeling it's something I definitely don't get driving around in in let's say my Volvo or anything like that it's a uh, it's a good feeling the other thing is is this bad boy has a V8. It's a 5.7 liter Hemi and it produces 395 horsepower and 400 foot pounds of torque. And <laughs> she shifts, man. She gets up and goes. I mean, the downside is we're about 15 miles per gallon city and 21 highway. Now, Dodge has made efforts to make those numbers a little more livable. I mean, after all, again, we are in 2019 and fuel economy is, uh, well, I should say it's, it's one of the big talking points. So Ram has tried a few, few tricks to get more fuel economy out of the Ram 1500. Uh, the first one is the available e-torque V8. Now that is the same 5.7 liter V8 that we have in this one. However, it has a, what Ram calls a mild hybrid system and that helps improve fuel economy by, by, by two, by, by two miles per gallon. Now it's not great, but it shows that Ram is, is kind of feeling the times. Then again, we're talking about a big vehicle with a big V8. Fuel economy is never going to be a Fuel economy is never really going to be great. It's it's just the nature of the beast. The second thing Dodge, or I keep saying Dodge, Ram tries to do to improve fuel economy, and this is for the highway, is using the air suspension. Now, the air suspension has basically four or five different driving modes. You have two off-road modes, you have a normal mode, and on the highway, going over 55 mile an hour, it deploys what's known as aero mode, which means it lowers the truck down, it hunkers it down, it punches a smaller hole in the air to help improve fuel economy. Again, the results aren't spectacular. I believe you'll get one, maybe two extra MPGs out of it, but it shows that Ram is, is actually trying. Ram is saying, hey, we know that a big V8 isn't the most economical thing in the world. We're trying. You know, you also have stop-start technology in here, but then again, so does just about everything else. 
Another thing that truck owners value is towing capacity. The Ram 1500 can tow 11,540 pounds, which put another way is roughly five and three quarter tons. So it should be good for most, you know, small boats, most trailers, most most things that the average truck user is gonna, gonna wanna tow. And the driving feel in this truck is phenomenal. A lot of older trucks that I've driven have had a really jarring ride, have been really uncomfortable in certain situations. Not so here, and it doesn't sacrifice road feel. This car corner is pretty flat and true. It handles really well given its immense girth, given what it actually is. It's, I wouldn't go as far as to say it's its fun on road, but it's it inspires confidence. It inspires you to drive, not like an idiot, but you know, you don't have to go 10 miles an hour around just about every corner. So complaints, um, I don't really have many. Probably the only real complaint I have about the way this thing drives is the brake pedal. It it feels a little soft. It's uh, the deployment of the brakes doesn't feel as linear as I would uh, would like. So if you just want to kind of brake lightly, it's it feels weird. Uh, so you're basically pressing the pedal, and nothing's really happening. Nothing's really happening, and basically all of a sudden you're kind of all over the brakes. Uh, that said, it's it's not something that would prevent me from buying the truck. It's not something that is so bad that it ruins the way the truck drives. Uh, it actually is probably something that I might even get used to if I owned the truck. So it's not terrible, but the brake feel is a little weird in this truck. Another thing I really, really, really like about driving this truck, and it's probably one of the coolest things, and you can't use it unless you're in reverse, or going basically under five miles an hour, and that is the surround view camera. Number one, the resolution is phenomenal. It's really high resolution, so you really get to see just about everything around you. The 360 camera is fantastic. The rear view camera, again, the picture's so clear that it makes reversing an absolute breeze. It, I know a lot of vehicles have this technology now. I've driven a couple Nissans with it. However, nothing has been able to match the clarity and the overall design and feel of Dodge's surround view technology. It's a great option. I highly recommend if you're buying a 1500 that you check that box because it makes parking this vehicle very easy. It makes reversing this vehicle very easy. It just makes driving this car much, much easier. And on the subject of parking, this truck is actually spectacularly easy to park. You'd think given the fact that it's freaking enormous, it'd be a pain in the rear end to park. It'd be a pain in the rear ends to drive in tight spaces. You might even think that performing a U-turn or a K-turn or something like that would be a chore in how many points, how many back and forth, back and forth, bit of an Austin Powers situation. However, the turning radius in this truck is out of this world. It is awesome. It's a little over 42 feet. And to put it to put it to you in real world terms or something that you might actually you know, be able to apply in your life. Uh, it has a better turning radius at slow speeds than my Volvo does. And my Volvo is a small compact hatchback. I think that's all you really need to know. So in 2019, the year or the decade really of miles per gallon, sustainability, electrification, all that stuff. How does a body on frame push rod V8 dinosaur fit into that equation? Well, exceptionally well. Here's the thing. This truck may be old school engine suspension. I mean, yes, we do have air ride and things of that nature. However, this truck with all its bells and whistles is phenomenal. Now, how much does all that phenomenalist cost? Well, a base Ram will set you back a little over $31,000. The limited in base form, for a little over 53,000. Our Ram, with every single bell and whistle that you could possibly want or imagine, a little over $68,000. Question is, is it worth it? And in my mind, hell yeah. This is such an awesome truck. All the features don't seem stupid. All the features serve a purpose and they do a really good job. Back to our original question, back to the, do I understand now why people are buying these trucks? Do I get why in 2019, these dinosaurs are still selling like hotcakes? And the answer to that is a resounding yes. 
Okay, so 68,000 might be out of the reach of a lot of people. However, a base RAM, a base RAM will set you back $31,000. To put that in perspective, the average cost of a car sold in the United States in 2018 was $35,000, $36,000. So you can get a whole hell of a lot of vehicle for less than the average cost of a normal car. Also, I love the presence a truck gives you. I love the high driving position. I love the feeling that if I wanted to, I feel like I could go and chase Rommel across North Africa. These trucks are awesome. I totally understand them now. I totally get why normal people like Courtney, like so many people are buying these things. These trucks are incredible. I get it. Um, there's really nothing more to say after that. So. On behalf of Shifting Lanes, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit that little thumbs up button. Hit the notification bell so you get all our Volvo content, all our review content, all of that fun stuff. All of that really helps us out. If you want to support the channel, you can head right below me. That is our Teespring account. We have a whole mess of new swag there, guys. Definitely check that out. You can also support us on Patreon to help bring awesome reviews like this one of the Ram 1500 Limited. You can also find us on social media at Shifting Lanes. If you're so inclined, you can locate me on social media at Chennedy83. As for the Ram, guys, this one's a wrap. I had a blast with it, so I'll see you next time.